Now today we are discussing about this Hariya Savaka, the disciple of the Buddha who is a, a noble one, Hariya. And uh, as Hariya, the one who possesses the strength of the person, who possesses the Aryan view, as the sixth great reviewing. And as uh, this Hariya hears the Dhamma, he or she hears it with full force, with full attention. We are talking about the strength of Allah, by which uh, one listens the Dhamma respectfully, carefully, meticulously, paying proper attention to the Dhamma preached by the Buddha. Such is the strength of the noble person, a person who possesses the Aryan view. So which kind of Dharma is it? This is the kind of Dharma preached by the Buddha. And Vinaya means discipline or rules of conduct for monks. And one listens to them as the Buddha preached. And uh, what the Buddha preached is for the sake of realization of the path and its fruit and for the liberation from suffering. Understanding this, one listens to this Dhamma and Vinaya. In the text is described many renderings about this Dhamma and Vinaya. And if we have to describe that, yeah, it, it, it is going to consume a lot of time. There will not be enough time to describe all of them. So we can only just touch on this subject as Dhamma being the teaching for the, for the purpose of one's welfare and Vinaya as a discipline how to conduct oneself. These are preached by the Buddha with great compassionate feeling and with omniscient knowledge. Uh, he preached the Dhamma for the welfare of beings as, and this is proclaimed by the Buddha. And as for the Vinaya, the rule of conduct, how to control oneself, how to control one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors, and such is Vinaya. So when these two are combined, it becomes Dhamma Vinaya, doctrine, discipline. In order to, the Vinaya is preached so as to cultivate one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors, so that they become purified, unblemished, uh, gentle, and amiable. So the Buddha gave that this Dhamma Vinaya with compassionate feeling, with compassion, with great compassion, and the knowledge of the exposition known as Jesandhanyana. Not for any other purpose, but for the purpose of welfare of beings to be liberated from suffering. <coughs> To put it down to practice. Yogis are practicing now way of mindfulness, Sati Prasanna. As they uh, in order to inspire all yogis who have begun to practice, all those who are going to practice, the Buddha has declared openly the seven benefits at the beginning of the great discourse on the way of mindfulness. As uh, a sure method to purify one's mind so that the mind is purified from pollutions of such as great hatred delusion. And uh, when one there's a chance to uh, there's a chance for these things to arise in your mind then you will become obsessed with these defilements, and if, uh, unless you are able to control with the correct method, uh, they are bound to be transformed into transgressive type of defilements, that is, transgressive action by body and speech. And in this way, there are three types of defilements refined, medium, and coarse, or coarse form of defilements, which are the cause for hundred, which are the cause of. 100% of human suffering. So this is a sure, declared as a sure path to be free from these 
defilements by noting four kinds of objects, namely the objects of the body, feeling, objects of the mind, and general objects as they arise in your body. When the spirit of the deep prana activating your mindfulness on ever arising object. And in this way the benefit has been revealed, declared at the beginning of the great discourse on the way of mindfulness. Such is what is known as the Dhamma. Now the yogis are practicing by paying attention to their body, noting main objects such as rising and falling as they arise at the moment of their arising, in order to deepen the concentration on the arising object, so that defilements such as lust, craving, are not given a chance to arise in their stream of consciousness. They are said to be calmed. And also uh, this uh, craving, uh, not only craving, but also ill will, anger, aversion, are not given a chance to arise in the stream of consciousness. Uh, instead, they are said to be calmed with the practice of the Tana. And other defilements or pollutants are also not given a chance to arise. They are all calmed with the practice of the Tana. First, on a part time basis. So, this is the sure path for the purification of beings, as given in the discourse of mindfulness as Ekaya no Mego. On besides purification of the mind, there is the, the advantages, the benefits of overcoming sorrow, human sorrow, lamentation, physical pain, mental distress, and eradicate the unaminding defilements which have been with us all along our lifetimes, with the realization of the path and fruit of the noble ones, such is the such are the exact definite uh, path revealed or declared by the Buddha. And, and such teaching is what is known as the Dhamma. So whoever undertakes the practice will be pulled away from the gravitational force of lust or craving raga so that their mind will be uplifted. They will never be downgraded, and such quality of states is known as the Dhamma. When one is practicing the high level discipline of the way of mindfulness, one should be well grounded in the basic vinaya discipline. As for monks, they have their rules, as much as in the lay people. There are things which are not uh, to commit wrongdoing by body and speech. And there are prohibitions. One should not do this, one should not speak like this, and one has to follow these instructions so as not to break them and be able to live according to the disciplines. In this way, the Buddha has given, laid out the rules of conduct of monks and also for lay people. In this way, with the disciplinary rules, one will be able to cultivate one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors so that. They become general and amiable. And in this way, the Buddha preached Avinaya, revealing the benefit of the practice. And this such is the, the kind of disciplinary rules laid down by the Buddha and preached by the Buddha. And uh, when somebody is preaching this Dhamma Avinaya, it is said that one must pay full attention and hear it with full mind. And in what way one should listen or hear the Dhamma preached by the, by the Buddha when one is giving it? One should be able to pay attention, as is given in this expression, one should heed it, Atyan Katuva, and gives it full attention, Manadhi Katuva. For us uh, in the world, uh, there are this. Uh, one's prosperity, welfare for 
one's own living conditions for our own livelihood, livelihood. We have to seek uh, means for our food, clothing and shelter. And that's one aspect of uh, seeking. Another aspect is to seek after welfare, one's own welfare. That is the practice of the three trainings, Sila Samari Pinya, Moral Virtue, Concentration and Wisdom. These are the two aspects of prosperity. As for the first one, the prosperity for uh, the seeking one's livelihood, uh, it is for one's own, the present life. And we may say it is for temporary sustaining, sustaining our livelihood, our life on a temporary basis. It won't go beyond that. As for the second one, that is the prosperity of the practice of the three trainings, this is the real uh, prosperity for one's uh, conduct, for one's practice, how to behave physically, how to behave verbally, and how to behave mentally, and how to cultivate knowledge. Defeating uh, for that, towards that end, uh, there are these instructions, the teachings, the guidance, together with the rules of conduct. And when one is hearing such things, one should regard them as one's own prosperity, one's own welfare. In the business world, you do business so as not to lose even a few, a few dollars, a few pence, a few cents. And you will be very careful not to lose the money. As for the farmers, they are very careful not to lose their seeds uh, of their plants and they have to be, they have to be stored respectfully. So too with the uh, hearing of the Dhamma. When one is hearing such a Dhamma as preached proclaimed by the Buddha, one should heed it and pay full attention to it in accordance with this expression Atten Katwa and uh, Manati Katwa. Heeding it as though it is one's own, pros- one's own property or welfare and gives it full attention. So now the yogis are listening to such talks which are for their welfare and the rules of conduct to conduct themselves. And when one is hearing it paying full attention to it, uh, one is said to be uh, behaving well as a yogi. As is given this expression, <coughs> engages it with all one's mind. Sava Sita Sava Sita The reason is uh, one should put one's mind in full force in all the three aspects, that is in the beginning of the discourse, in the middle, and also in the end of the discourse. One should heed it with full force, with full mind. Put all your attention in listening to the discourse. Then only it will be that amount to listening respectfully, paying full attention, without any distraction or any wavering, such as how one hears the Dharma. Then, uh, then only it will be the power or strength of the noble one's areas. So, a person uh, who possesses the Aryan view considers thus, am I possessing this uh, strength of a person who possesses the Aryan view? That is, am I listening with full force? He considers, he or she considers thus, and he or she understands that he or she is fulfilling this requirement. And such is how one hears the Dhamma. Uh, this is how one does correctly. And uh, in this way, one performs what is known as self-scrutiny and coming to a definite decision. And this expression here, the Dhamma, has with eager ears as is given by this expression, Oita Soto Yansunati. 
That means uh, at this point uh, the commentaries have described the strength of the noble ones, Hariyas, that uh, how they cherish hearing the Dhamma without being, without thinking anything else or indulging in any conversation or distraction or restlessness. They are really putting full force into the Dharma, putting their full mind into the Dharma, and it is said that they are never satisfied with hearing the Dharma. In the old days, Dharma teachings used to be given at night times from the evening to the dawn, and uh, such is the strength of the Hariyas to listen to the Dharma uh, without any distraction or restlessness, paying full attention to the talk. And winding up this uh, sixth uh, great reading, the late Venerable Master Chiaro has given this aphorism, uh, uh, which, is, which is translated as follows, when hearing the good Dharma preached by the Buddha, one pays full attention to hear all, such as the sixth great reviewing. At this point, the commentaries also reveal the strength of ordinary folks in listening to the Dhamma. As for ordinary folks, they go after good voice from the Dhamma teacher uh, as much as, as singing, some romantic stories. They want to hear such such things as romantic stories. They are interested in hearing comedies with a touch of humor. If the Dhamma is given in an ordinary way, traditional way, they consider it is very bland, very dry, and very uh, it's not, not interesting. They don't take interest in it. Because they don't take interest in it, they might doze off by listening to the good Dharma if it's preached in a traditional way, in a classical way. There will be no paying full attention, as already said in the case of Arias, and there will be, there will, uh, although their mind is restless, the body uh, calms down. It's not the good way of calming down, it is the unwholesome bad way of calming down. Just like we say when you fall asleep, we say we are in deep concentration. Instead of saying we are asleep. So too, we have a shrunken mind, in Pali is known as lena, and dozing off, and uh, leaning on the nearest wall or post, he or she might just take a short nap. Such is the strength of the ordinary folks, as given in the commentaries. When the Purujanas hear the Dharma, if they don't find it interesting, then they will not put full force in it, no full attention to the talk, to the talk and uh, automatically they lose interest. Such is the nature of people if they don't in- take interest in the talk, or if the talk are not interesting for them. So this is Dhammadaya Bala. This is the usual strength of in this case, who are the Purushanas, the ordinary beings. In the case of the practice of Sati Karna as well, in the beginning of the discourse, in the beginning, uh, the talks on Sati Karna is uh, uh, considered as uninteresting, very dry, without any embarrassment, because it is only showing the practical aspect of the Dharma. And in the beginning of the great discourse on mindfulness, seven benefits of the practice are given only in a very simple, simple way. So simple that it will not be of interest to ordinary beings. And when it is undertaken as a practice, it will, people will feel very dry, uninteresting, However, with 
faith and confidence in the Buddha, faith and confidence in the, in the, in the practice. If one undertakes the practice as being guided by the meditation teachers, one will be able to instill faith and confidence under in the practice. And then one will be transformed from uh, dry practice to interesting one. And as the noting proceeds in the course of the practice, one will be able to experience what is known as PT, when that is just, which refreshes both mind and body, with minor feeling of zest, or sometimes rendered as thrill, uh, running through the body, especially at Udiya Vyanyana, the instantaneous arising and passing away of psychophysical phenomena, one will come to experience the major form of zest, pity, rapture, so that uh, one will take interest in the practice, Beginning to, begin to take interest in the practice, so much so that one will, one will not wish to change one's sitting posture, nor will one wish to open one's eyes which are being closed. And at this stage, one is said to be developing the mind and insight, and originally one is said to be transformed from dryness, blandness to interest. And uh, because one is realizing the kind of pressure which is unalloyed, that means it is not mixed with anything, it is good in itself and unforsakable. Because it is so good that you don't want to let go of it. It is always ever fresh and new. There is no such thing as fresh and new just with one thing in an unalloyed state in ordinary, in the ordinary world. It is only in the Dharma, especially in the practice of the deep Dharma, that it is uh, interesting and it is interesting and good in an unalloyed state and something which is unforeseeable. Uh, in this way, you know, one comes to this stage and uh, one will be able to listen and hear the Dharma with interest. And that is not so uh, in the case of ordinary beings. So we have this uh, Dhamma as the teachings for one's own welfare and the Vidya as a rule of conduct for one's own lay people. And if one is not here in Dhamma the full force paying full attention, and if, if one is hearing it, one is involved uh, with this, and one is said to be overwhelmed by or overwhelmed with the strength of ordinary folks. Though Prasanna's ordinary beings will listen to the Dharma in the beginning, they may find it interesting, but later on they don't find any essence in the Dharma they will feel bored with listening to the Dharma. Now, the preaching is about Dharma and Vinaya. One should consider these things as one's own welfare and listen with full attention, understanding the correct methods of the practice in order to undertake the practice. Though one may be uh, listening without interest in the beginning, because one feels dry or uh, the Dhamma and the practice, gradually one will be able to take interest in the practice so that it becomes, the Dhamma becomes unalloyed and the pleasure of the Dhamma will become unalloyed and unforsakable. And then one will come to discover, excuse me, discover it as full of essence and one will consider it has one's own welfare and prosperity, paying full attention. Such is the strength of the noble ones. And at this point, uh, so from Sarah's experience, some 40 years ago, or more than 40 years ago, at the Mahasi Meditation Center, 
the venerable late venerable Mahathir Siyato used to give the mark talks every Upasata or Sabbath days so that people from outside would come and listen. And as the late venerable Mahathir Siyato gave a talk for the welfare of one oneself, for themselves, and also uh, talk about the disciplinary rules. Uh, because the, uh, the, ma, the talk was not interesting for many people. In those days, uh, the talk even was for one or two or sometimes two hours. And uh, there were no such thing as uh, comedies, comedies or humorous stories uh, included in the talks. It is only the practical oriented talks as are the Satipatthana talks are. So after two hours when the Dhammato uh, was over, a young man came and said that for him, since there was no essence in the talk, he didn't take any interest and he felt very dry and bored. It is correct that uh, for, for some people who have not undertaken the practice or have no interest will feel very dry because such talks are particularly oriented talks and they, uh, they are not interesting for uh, many folks. So, as for some people, later on, as for the practitioners, they take interest in the talks. Mm. Okay, so I'll just repeat my thing. Ours up. We should stop here for today. <laughs>